Hi YouTube. Today I'm coming from my bed all cuddled up. I bet you're wondering why. Or maybe you're not. But today's video is about the making of my bed. Come on. So I've had some questions about how I made my bed in my camper van and I'd only really seen one other video that did it like mine and it didn't do it exactly like mine. I basically have a bed box that folds in two places and I can keep these back bench seats going in the van. So if somebody needs to ride with a seatbelt in the back seat, I have three seats back there and that allows me to take my kids with me and so that's how it works six inches 30 inches on top of a 36 inch base and everything is 48 inches wide so it makes it just just a bit smaller than a than a full-size bed full-size sheets fit it really well so that's the basics of the bed I am going to show you some footage of when I was making the bed I had started out taking some video of course, I was taking it the wrong direction. I wasn't doing horizontal like I should have been, but you know, you live and you learn. I'd never made a YouTube video before. I'd never made a camper van before. Uh, I hope that this will be an inspiration to others that, you know, have something in their heart that they think they really wanna do, but don't feel like they have the skills for it. YouTube is a great resource for that. And that's another reason why I'm making these videos. Not because I think, oh look, this is so cool what I did, look how I did it. No, just the opposite. I can't believe I did it and it's working when I don't even know what I'm doing at all and I probably should have used this kind of tool and this kind of screw and I didn't because I didn't know any better. And I've watched so many videos and the ones where somebody is, you know, an expert carpenter and they make these beautiful Instagram worthy vans with just all kinds of neat features and beautiful types of woods and you know you look at that and you think that is awesome if I could do that that would be awesome but I can't do that and I also can't afford to do that then there's a place for you in van life too I had a minivan already maybe you don't but minivans are much cheaper than the than the um, cargo vans that we're talking about now Here's my van, empty, ready to pick up the lumber. And then I got my lumber. I had gotten tools for my brother and I began cutting. First I was measuring, maybe not the best way. I began using the power tools I had gotten from my brother. And when the batteries ran out, I used hand tools. <clears throat> Maybe not the safest or best way to cut things. Maybe using your leg as the thing to hold down the wood while you cut isn't the best, but eventually I got the cuts done and then I started figuring out exactly how the bed was going to go. Here I, I laid out the plywood, the sizes that I thought I would use just to get the right height and figure out what I needed. I was figuring out exactly how it was going to flip over and also just how far off the ground it should be and how big the pieces should be. I had the passenger seat scooted up and the driver's seat normal so I could see how much room I would have once the seat was uh, scooted up but also exactly how it would fit against the driver's side in driving position. So there's the first four legs I cut and I just was measuring all of it to see kind of how it would work in the first dream of how the bed would go. So here I just propped up the four legs that I had cut and even though I had cut 
the front and back an inch different and I thought that would account for the slant of the minivan floor. It did not. As you can see on the level here, I needed to adjust it further. So I would have to recut some of the legs in my next build. Honestly, I won't worry so much about it being level because you never park on level surfaces and I'd rather my head be higher than my feet. So I recut the legs and even though it looks slanted here, it actually is level. If you can see the little bubble on the level, you can tell that it's, it's level. It just doesn't look it. After talking to my brother, we decided I needed some more supports and I added those and this rim to keep the part of the um, part that was going to go on the bench more supported. As you can see, I have much more support underneath the bed there. And then I was going to add the piano hinge to make the part that went on the bench fold. And I would also be doing that on the front there, which I'm calling the footer, just that last little bit. So now I've got the piano hinge attached and this is the first time I will have folded it to see if it works. Here we go. Yay! It really worked. Voila! It's a folding bed or at least half a folding bed. So that was actually a very exciting moment for me. And here's the foot room that my daughter will have when she's riding in the car. She could also put her feet up on the cushion that will be on top of the bed. And then here's the part that I still need to build. I need to put the footer that will fold forward when I'm actually sleeping. So here is the finished product with the footer and all of it painted and I've got my rugs down. So this is what it looks like in driver mode. I have the front seat pushed all the way back against the box and the front part is folded with its legs and the other parts folded as well. And this is what it looks like, only I also have the cushions on top of it when we're driving. You can see here how it looks when it's folded up in the back seat and how much room there is. And then underneath you can see how much storage room there is. I've added rugs to cover up the ugly part of the floor, but you can see that I have a zip tie connecting it to the mechanics that used to hold the seats. Those zip ties are heavy duty, 175 pound tensile strength. And you can see I have them on this side as well, and they're in several places, and that should be enough to make sure that that bed box is not going anywhere. Okay, so the way the footer works is I had to figure out a way to keep the legs bent up while I folded it over so they didn't fit into the chair. So I added Velcro here so when, I, when it's being turned over, the legs will stay up and I just flip it over and then I just reach under and pull the leg off the Velcro and set it up and that seems to work really well. Here's the other side after I've pulled that leg down and then I'll give you a view of that middle leg just fits into the console. There's a little slot there. So that's what it looks like when that part is pulled out. So when setting up the back part, you need to first put down this uh, little pink cushion and that just helps level out the back row to make it more stable when it's folded out. And then I just flip it over and kind of push it down to get it settled into the seat there level it off and then there you have fold it out bed just got to add the cushions and you're ready to go the measurement of the legs going from the front to back starts with the footer being 16 and a half inches the front leg 16 inches, the middle leg 15 inches, and the back leg 13 and a half inches. That small leg that goes into the console on the footer is seven and three quarters inches. 
When you're ready to take down the bed, you simply have to get those legs back up Velcroed, and then you can pull this part up and fold it back. And sometimes I can fold up that part and leave the rest of the bed to make it easily travel mode again without having to put everything back. So it just kind of rests on that little folded out part. One thing that I would do differently if I was going to redo it is um, I made it so that it would lay flat, which is good for travel. The only other one I'd seen that folded like this didn't fold flat, but now I understand why, and I think that was a better idea. If the base was just a little bit smaller, if the base was 30 inches, just like the back seat portion that folds out, and then the front seat portion would be a little bit, it would be 12 inches instead of six inches. So that would, it wouldn't fold flat then. That, that front part would kind of just, you know, have to lay on top of, of the other um, 30 inch piece. But it would give me more room in my um, driver's seat to lean the seat back. And I have noticed that sometimes I, I wish I could scoot it back farther or lay it back farther and it would give um, my daughter a little bit of extra leg room in the back. So if I was gonna do it again, I would probably do it that way. And one of the reasons it's great to watch all these videos on how people did it is when they tell you what they didn't do well. So if you're gonna do this same kind of bed in your minivan, make sure you leave enough room between the, the box that's gonna stay in, the, in its place and how much you wanna lean your seat back knowing that sometimes, you know, if you're parked and you're waiting on something, you may want to lean it back farther than you do to drive. So I would take that into consideration. And I'm sure I made other mistakes, but that's the one that I really have noticed so far. If you have any questions about how I did anything, just let me know. And like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for supporting me in this journey. It's been very interesting and fun.